Hey, good weekend and happy Turkey Day, guys. Uh, this is my weekend video. And I got a few things I'd like to share with you guys uh, today. And uh, so uh, some things I want to point out here. The I got the uh, futures contracts up here. So anybody who doesn't really follow futures here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here. Uh, one second here. Yeah, I'm going to get a little up. Okay. Uh, so this the NQs represent the NASDAQ. The ESs represent the S&Ps. The RTY represents the, uh, the Russell 2000. And the YM represents the Dow Jones. Okay, that's your four major indices in the markets. Okay, so we had some major damage done uh, to these markets. So I use uh, volume profile as my analysis. And on the daily time frame, you have the monthly webs on your volume profile. So basically what I've got going on here, the NASDAQ is the strongest. Uh, this represents the developing value for November. We are at the value area low of course nasdaq's holding out the best we have still have not broke back down into october's inventory yet we're still holding up here to buy buy a thread on the nasdaq nasdaq they use the nasdaq to hold prices for uh, friday's close don't get me wrong everything was selling off but they were doing their best not to dump tech because they knew once that happened everything would fall apart okay my most bearish signal in the markets was the S&Ps. And uh, so I had been talking, telling people in the room pretty much all week long the reason why using volume profile theory. And so basically what we did Friday, I'm going to start here on the monthly webs. And I'm going to uh, get into it a little bit closer here in a minute. So right here, this purple line, right here, that's purple line. Uh, that represents the October close. We did close below that October close on the uh, 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 ES futures. So we did break a major support going into the close. Doesn't mean tomorrow, uh, Monday, we're not going to get back up and, and regain it. But it did break down, okay? So, but we have a major, remember October was one heck of a month in the mark. And, and we just, we took off, you know, near the lows you know, uh, September lows and just took off to, to the, to, to the races in October. Okay. And it went up so fast. And here's what I definitely want to point out to anybody who's trading this market. So I am going to enlarge this here on the ESs and I'm going to go down to a one hour chart and this represents your weekly volume profile. Now let me uh, clear that out there. Get my little cursor going here. Okay. Uh, so basically, what we got going on here, and uh, I want everybody to be aware of, okay, uh, <clears throat> we have a very, because at, from the very beginning of October, we built out a very poor volume profile. These line, blue lines right here represent untested virgin pointing control. So basically, if you're building value at, especially at all-time highs in a market, you do not want to see a situation like this where you get a runaway gap to the upside, okay? This this represents a potential blow-off top scenario. When you're at all-time highs in the market and you do not backfill, which you should. I mean, in any type of just building to new highs, higher highs, higher highs, you should be built back testing. You should be coming in here, back testing these virgin point of controls. And we did not do that. It was just a rocket ship to the upside. This is a major, major uh, signal that uh, uh, traders are getting too long, too quick. And th this, these virgin point of controls, they are likely to be tested in a, in a deep way. This represents a potential blow off top scenario and we could just come crashing down at any moment here. So we still got technically one, two, three virgin point of controls below us that this thing could fall in on your face. We did manage to repair one on Monday. There was one virgin point of control coming on Monday. We took it out. We had another virgin point of control on Friday. We managed to take that out, so that's repaired. Okay, so we did do a little bit of repair if they want to save it. But we still got these down below us. And, I, I, you know, given the headlines we're hearing so far this weekend, it's not looking good for the markets come Monday. So this, without a doubt, is the most dangerous scenario 
we've got going into next week, in my opinion. Okay. One second. Okay. Put this back down here. Now, this one here. Do not ignore what happened Friday. We not only broke October's open, we went all the way to October's or October's close. Okay, this is here is October's close. We broke that, came down all the way back down to October open. And we, we, we bounced right off that into the last five minutes of the close. Okay. So I do want to point this out. The Russell is looking very ugly. We we literally took out the entire amount of value in the Russell in one trading session. Okay, one half of a trading session because we closed at one o'clock. So yeah, really ugly price action going on there. And remember, your Russell's weighted with energy, financials, and biotech. You know, so that's you know that's a cornerstone of our market. You know, that those those are very important areas of the market. Well, look at your Dow Jones, which is highly uh, industrials and, and consumer discretionary. Okay. You know, you have industrials and consumer discretionary really, really heavy here. We could not hold uh, the, uh, uh, this is September. This was built out in September. Okay. This value was built out in September. So we could not hold the bull bear cross for September's inventory. Okay. We closed below that. We tried to come back up into it the last hour, and they couldn't hold it into the close. It just took her back down. So it was extremely bearish into the close, and so we, uh, we are actually going into a new week with a uh, on the bearish side of uh, uh, volume, uh, monthly volume profile. Okay, I don't know. Maybe we gap up Monday, but you know that's that gives you four major sectors of the market now that have. Uh, broken patterns using your volume profile theory. Okay, so keep that on watch. One second here, I'll be right back. Okay, guys and gals, uh, I have this study, and if anybody wants it, all you have to do is leave me a message or DM me in uh, in uh, Slack or uh, or Zoom. You know, you can DM me in Zoom if you want, uh, or leave a message about the YouTube video if you want. Uh, this is a really nice study. It tracks uh, your monthly pivots, okay? And this scan right here, you're looking into your uh, weekly. This is a default watch list from Thinkorswim. And there's basically 568 stocks on this watch list, okay, above $10 a share, okay? So that gives you some idea what the sample is. 160 of them broke their monthly pivot Friday, okay? So that's basically 28% of all stocks, of all the, the relevant stocks in the market, 28% of them broke their monthly pivot on Friday. Okay, just think about that, okay? And that's what this, uh, this uh, little scan does there. It's just identifying everything that hit Friday, okay? It's not what happened last week. It's telling you what broke monthly pivot just Friday, okay? That just gives you some idea how bad the breath just com completely collapsed on Friday, okay? And there you go. And when markets, a bear market starts, it's generally le led by the Russell, which that's what it's doing here. It's also, you know, typically in most bear markets, you know, it's either written led by the Russell or the Qs. Well, this time it's being led by the Russell, you know, and then then the Dow soon follows suit, which it is, okay? And that's exactly pretty close to what we're having here. The only thing, the Qs are really the only thing holding this market up right here, okay? So my main takeaway here, guys. So I got two different views here on SPY. I got one on the one hour, and that's using your weekly webs, Okay. And then I don't have any webs on this other one. I just got uh, uh, expected moves, uh, market maker moves on my chart. That's the only study I've got. So what's my main takeaway here this week? I did some math. If we were to get a 5% down move, okay, okay, that is going to put us down here to 435. And that, that would suggest that this virgin point of control and this virgin point of control will be taken out this week for a 5% correction in this market. 
that would also put us right into this trend support. So I am floating the idea this week that we are going to gap down right out of the gate Monday morning, and we will probably see before the end of the week a 5% correction in this market. So that is the scenario which I think is unfolding in front of our eyes here. You know, typically what you see when a bear market starts, it's violent. The very first few days or couple weeks, that's the worst of it, man. And, you know, uh, what, the, what we did right here, when it gets started, it doesn't look too bad. It's that second or third week into it, that's when you really start seeing the selling pressure. And I think we're right there in going into next week. So I do want to float that idea going forward here. VXX. Okay, VXX, guys. We had a very explosive move here on our VXX. We took at, uh, on a weekly basis, we took at two virgin point of controls Friday there on our volatility. And we man they managed to bring it back in into the close. Okay? So it was a really bearish session you know we got up to 26 but i do want to point out here on a daily time frame here on my vxx uh give me one second here i'm gonna have to get it loaded up here so here's what i got it took me a minute there to get it going here so we did break and hold above the monthly pivot on the vxx friday and i know it's a holiday shortened day so you don't you know, there's a lot of times they'll sucker people in short and then they'll just, you know, they'll eat them alive the next trading day. But I really think we have a breath breakdown in this market. And I, I, I think I proved it with my scan. So just keep that in mind in the uh, back of your head here. So basically, this represents the quarter pivot right here. Okay. And that would put us at $30 going back into these prior highs. So I am thinking going into this week, uh, with my bearish thesis, that we are going to see volatility between 30 and 34.50. Right here, going into the week, closing the week out, it's 34.50. That's your 200-day moving average. So I am thinking they are going to try to run this volatility at some point this week between 30 and 30.50. Now, if that's the case, the rate that we are going to go down on early in the week is going to be rapid. The only way they can maintain a volatility spike at that magnitude is to see an extremely rapid decline, okay? So we can look, we can get my 5% sell-off and not see volatility hit my targets. I do want to point that out. All they have to do is just sell it down, you know, you know, Monday, sell it down 2%, 1.5% uh, Tuesday, you know, 1% Wednesday, you know. They can just take it down slowly, and volatility is going not, not going to go to high heaven. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, this this is a most, you know, personally, you know, it's too late to add volatility, you know, take volatility long, in my opinion, because you're, you know, uh, you, um, this is very difficult. This is a really extremely difficult uh, uh, trade to uh, bet on, you know, because you have to have that rate of change on your side to make this uh, be a good payday, uh, taking volatility to the long side. So just keep that in mind going forward. So my final view uh, and takeaway. So basically, uh, Russia came out. They're, they're balking already about the additional supply, putting uh, continuing that 400,000 barrels a day. Uh, you know, since we lost 12% you know, on crude Friday, yeah, they, they, they don't have any desire to sit there and add that extra 400,000 barrels a day. They're, they're citing uh, supply constraints, you know, just like all these other OPEC countries, you know, and which that's not really the case, but you know how that is. So the leader, uh, uh, one last thing I'm going to talk about here, the leaders in the sell-off, yeah, you see a lot of energy names uh, really getting on there. Then we have Caterpillar near the top of the list here. Bank of America, you remember, you know, Caterpillar is an industrial, Bank of America. Um, so this gives you some idea of some of the leaders Friday on the downside, okay? Um, so, you know, obviously no tech. There's no tech leading to the downside there Friday. So they're not willing to give up on the tech quite yet, but I think we're right there. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I might be long every day next week, but... 
this is the best scenario for a really nice pullback that I have seen since April. So, and the breath is just screaming to me that you, you should have been, uh, I mean, you had to have some uh, short exposure going into next week to start the week. I mean, you just absolutely had to have it going uh, going into Friday close. I mean, the odds of success are really the highest they've been, one of the highest periods in this entire year that for an overnight trade, even after such a massive sell-off uh, we saw. Okay? So uh, that's pretty much what I did. But this, uh, that right there gives you an idea of some of the top things that sold off Friday. And like I said, they, they were holding tech. And like I said, uh, uh, I still think uh, last Monday, I was calling significant highs on Apple sales, or, uh, Apple, uh, uh, NVIDIA, Micron, and Qualcomm. They all, the candlestick patterns, all Monday suggested to me that uh, we had we had just put in a major high in in those stocks, and of course they came in Tuesday and they tried to uh, upgrade uh, Micron uh, to try to both that, and I think later in the week they tried to upgrade Nvidia too. And but my point is, um, uh, what I was seeing Monday, but I was really starting to get interested to the short side after what was what the price action Monday, so. Okay, guys, uh, that's pretty much everything I'm seeing. Uh, please like the video if you like it, and uh, you know, leave some comments if you guys want uh, that that uh, 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 scam. Just DM me or something, and uh, uh, or uh, leave me direct messages in Slack or Zoom or something. Okay, thanks a lot.